Karibu AMG Realtors. We have specialized in selling of land across the country in areas like Nanyuki, Naivasha, Nakuru, Juja, Kagunda Road, Malindi and the Abadeas. Contact us today for land investment solutions and have your title deed delivered within 60 days upon completion of payment. SMS AMG to 402 or call us on plus 254-748-229-941. AMG Realtors, we don't just deal in land, we deal in value. Hey Lacey. How are Hello, you? Hello, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Welcome to the We Don't Play podcast show. Well, thank you. I appreciate you asking me. I was excited when you asked me to be on the show. I know. I know. We've been seeing each other on Clubhouse for such a long time. So I was like, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's just make it happen. <laughs> you know? Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I was excited. You're welcome. Anytime, anytime. I would love people to know who you are and you know just have a brief introduction of what you do so that people have an understanding because i know they've read the title but it's also good to have that backstory as well so um as you've probably seen my name is Lacey. i live in rural eastern utah and i am a fifth generation gardener and farmer um i have always been a gardener and i really started to dive deep within learning the differences between soil sciences and and um, the difference between how your soil health can affect your your um, product about 10 years ago. And so I kind of took over the garden that is that we still plant over at my grandma's house. It was my great grandparents house before that. Um, and it is just a place um, where we still go and plant the, the land's been in my family for 132 years now we have but I'm the fifth generation. My kids will hopefully be the sixth generation to be able to um, cultivate the land that we have. So we have 40 acres of the original homestead um, from my great great grandfather. And so we are still trying to um, cultivate it and make it be the best that it possibly can be with new things that are coming about, you know, learning about the, the soil health and how that really can affect um, your crop production. We just do um, hay, like that you feed your cows and your horses on, on the majority of the property, but where my grandma's house is, we, that's where we plant our garden for my family, for my sister's family, and for my mom. And um, in fact, my dad was the one, it, this land came down through my dad's side of the family, and he was the one that had kind of um, taken up the reins to this property after my great-grandma passed away. And then we unfortunately lost him suddenly and unexpectedly four years ago to a heart attack. And so at that point, you know, having two daughters, and I am the youngest of the two daughters, and kept kind of the one that was more into that kind of realm with him um, than my sister was, but... He um, thankfully had my oldest nephew that was there a lot with him, and so my nephew helped a lot with you know some of the things that we didn't know because my dad was an independent person. He went and did things by himself, and so he rarely asked for help. And so we we kind of were picking at straws once he passed away because, like I said, it was unexpected. Never in a million years, it, everyone that we talked to, never in a million years would they have expected him of all people to pass away of a heart attack. And so we were thankful that, you know, my nephew had spent as much time as he did and that we had so many great farm neighbors um, around that picked up, helped us pick up the pieces and, you know, kind of showed us as far as th there's things that you don't think about, as, like where's all of our drain valves at and things like that that aren't on maps anywhere. It was just something that he did every year. And so um, we were surrounded by an amazing community. And so that's actually where my um, Instagram page came from originally was we just had so many people asking, you know, what are you going to do with the property? What are you going to sell? Are you going to... And we couldn't do that. I mean, it's just, it's something that has been in our family for so long and that place means so much to me and to the rest of our, our family that that's not a place that we could ever um, turn the reins over to somebody else unless it's by force. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that it's going to have to... Um, stay in the family at least for us it's, um, there's a, a guy that, it, by the name of Doug Duran that he talks about that it's not our land it's just in our care for now and so this land is in our care for now and so I hope to be able to keep it in our family and be able to pass it down to, to the next generation to be able to care for, for the land as well and so uh, the, the Instagram originally just came from to let people know 
you know, what we were doing after dad had passed away. Just our local friends and family and stuff. And then I, I started having a lot of people asking me questions about, you know, well, how do you grow this? How do you, you know, how, if I'm going to grow my own crop, if I'm going to grow vegetables, how do I do that? And I realized that not everyone is as blessed as I am to have been brought up learning how to garden from my grandma and my grandpa and my mom and my dad. And there's a lot of people that are kind of stepping back into that life now, you know, between the food costs, between, you know, not really understanding or knowing where their food truly is coming from and being able to have that control over it. Um, I think that that's something that is, is a little bit romantic to people and they're wanting to step back into that lifestyle of just knowing where their food comes from, teaching their children that the food doesn't come from the grocery store, that it you know, can come from a seed that they put in the ground and they can grow and see their excitement because, it's, oh my gosh, it is just bar none, the best thing that I can, can think of. And so um, that's originally where it kind of came from and it's grown into a, a garden co- consultation and mentorship. And so I've been happy to try to help people learn how to grow their own food through, through the Instagram page. Wow. Thank you. I get a little bit long-winded. <laughs> no, no, no. That was spot on because you have literally taken everything. Like you put 132 years in three minutes. <laughs> That's what you've done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's beautiful because I don't hear much because that's why I also got connected to you because I don't hear people talk about garden consultation. Like that is not a thing just generally because they're like oh you have a garden okay i won't that's my stuff you know don't don't come to my yard this is my territory but when you start thinking about the consultation you go beyond the farming you think about the you know the little things that matter that go a very long way and that's what you've been able to do for people and now they've been able to build their own so this is like a fortune that you can't just pass on like that it's it's so close to home it's literally home because that is what you know you're giving people and that also gives you that benefit and that boost because when they come and you give them the history they're like yeah these guys know their stuff i i hope so and that's what i think the fun thing about gardening is and my, my husband will tell you that i drive him absolutely nuts with all of my hobbies i'll, I'll pick up something and then like do it for a little while and then like go on to something different gardening is the one thing in my life that has been a constant and I think that the reason that that is is because there is so much to learn. There's literally a million wormholes to crawl down as far as learning something new about gardening that I never knew. And so I think that's why I've never really not gotten bored with it, but um, there's just always something new to learn or a, a different skill to cultivate within myself that I hope to be able to pass on to other people because, you know, especially right now with the cost of, of food and the inflation that's going on within fuel and everything, there's a lot of people that are considering, you know, how am I going to be be able to feed my family? Um, and not only that, how am I going to teach my children to be able to grow their own food? And if we can cultivate this in enough people, in enough communities and turning their, um, you know, little plot of land, maybe if they've got a little front yard garden, if they've got some pots on their front porch, if they've got, you know, if they've got the capability to be able to purchase an aquaponic system and put it in their apartment, but just to be able to pass on that, that knowledge to their neighbors, like how far this can go in combating food deserts and, and people right now not being able to afford, you know, they're choosing between buying fuel to go to work or buying produce or, or food to feed their family. And so I think that if we can cultivate this, you know, in a lot of different people and in, if we can, you know, make that the ripple effect in the pond and that they can spread that knowledge to other people too, I think that we're just going to be a lot better off. I, I don't think that the, I think I saw a thing that the other day that the very first grocery store wasn't even around until the 1950s. It was like 1946 or something like that. Until then, everyone just grew food in their own yard. And I, we have a lot a bigger population now. And not everybody has a yard to be able to grow in. But I, I, I'm hopeful through, you know, our clubhouse rooms that we have. We've got a couple of really big gardening clubs on Clubhouse that we've been able to teach a lot of people different things within those clubs. Um, and kind of planting that seed in their hearts to know that they can have some control over their food and their, their, they can help teach their, their community how to grow as well. And that we can kind of get back to those times when we weren't so reliant on 
on all of the food systems that are a little bit scary right now. Yeah, that's true. There's so much happening that you have to really think about what you're consuming. You know, that's why people are trying to get back in the gym. They're trying to swim more. They're trying to stay active because you can't just sit down on things that you don't know what is going into your body because you want to combat that. You want to be something, someone that is always up to speed and always getting that firsthand and always being 10 steps ahead as usual. So that's a really good thing to think about. Now, when you mentioned this, what came to my mind was what is the number one question people always ask about gardening when they're coming for consultation? I think that the number one thing that they ask the most is how to get started. Or I also hear a lot, I've got a, I've got a black thumb, I can't grow anything. And I think that it's a misunderstanding that, you know, people like me just automatically came to gardening and were good at it. That's so far from the truth. <laughs> and I, it, it's a skill like anything else that has to be um, learned and you have to fail at some things. And then, you know, even from year to year, you know, you can do the same exact thing for your tomatoes this year, and then next year when you do the same exact thing, just depending on the weather, how, how hot it is throughout the, the day, how much humidity there is, there can be huge caveats that can completely make you know your tomato crop a disaster and you did nothing differently. And so I, I would say that the number one question is how to get started. And to that, I would say that my answer is always just to start. It doesn't matter if it's, um, you know, like I said, a pot on your porch and you grow some lettuce for the very first time. Um, it's just to take that, that moment to start learning a little bit and then push yourself to just start. It doesn't matter, you know, like I said, if you're in an apartment and you don't have like a, a balcony to be able to put a pot on or anything, there is indoor systems, indoor brewing systems that are like an aquaponics or an aeroponics system um, that kind of sit in the corner of your house. And so the, some of the systems can be really expensive, but also if you look on YouTube, you can find what, out ways to DIY it as well. So I think that's the fun thing about gardening is that it can be brought about by so many different methods and in so many different ways that um, as long as you have that need in your heart to be able to know where your food comes from or even just to want to know where it comes from and that you know everything that was put into that, that food before you put it in your mouth, um, that is, is the driving factor and the fire behind you while you push through the hard times because there will be hard times, there will be things that you screw up, um, but as long as you just keep trying you know, things, things will get better, but yeah, by all means, don't think that just because like I've been growing my entire life that my garden is a success because I'm two weeks late getting it in this year and there was massive weeds I had to pull out yesterday. So oh. <laughs> nothing is perfect. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's all about timing when I think about gardening because of the seasons and planning things and, you know, checking the weather and all those things. It's like a daily affair. You can't just ignore and say, okay, yeah, three months, I'm good. You can just plan it out. Now, those things are important for people to think about. And when they're also planning their own gardening, when they're planning their own timings and everything, does that have a conflict in a way when people are trying to get ahead of the game or like trying to just be good enough so that they don't have any problems later on? Or is it based on where they're located? Maybe they're in the West, on the South, in the East. You know, they can be in different places in the world, but... When you think about those specific things, because you can be in diff you can be in a different climate from me. So if I'm coming to you for consultation, what you're going to tell me may be different from what I'm experiencing. So how do you deal with those things and those factors to just stay on track? So the the biggest thing that I look at first is to find out you know where you're located as far as the zip code, and then um, the U.S. has what's called gardening zones. So I grow in gardening zone 5B, which is on the colder side of the spectrum. Um, and I've got uh, a whole pot or a whole blog post about this, about how to find your your um, your gardening zone, and you know why it's important to know that. Because if I'm in zone five, and say you're in zone nine, I know that my last frost date isn't until about mid-May. Yours is going to be a lot earlier. It's going to be about the first part of April, I want to say. Um, but there is great resources online to be able to find out what, when your last frost date is. So because I am in Utah and we freeze and we get snow here, um, you don't want to plant your garden out. You know, since I know that the last projected frost date is about mid-May, 
I am a little bit more cautious, so I wait an, a week past that before I plant my garden. This year, it happened to line up with when we were moving my husband's shop, and so we weren't able to do it that weekend. So this last, actually yesterday, was the first day that we were able to get some things in the ground other than the onions. Um, and then, so taking that into consideration when somebody comes to me with some help, first some help, um, and then going off of that, if they're wanting to start their own seeds indoors, all of the seed packets have on the back of them, um, you know, start four to six weeks before your last, your last frost date. So then we can look at the calendar and say, okay, if you're going to start your own seeds, these seeds you need to start in this week, these seeds you need to start in this week, and we can get a, a solid plan. A lot of people, when they're just starting out, they don't want to get that far into um, doing their own seeds and everything, because it's a little bit more in-depth. So they choose to go to a greenhouse and go and buy their, their starts from a greenhouse. But it's still important to keep in mind your frost dates, because everyone else is going to be going to the, to the greenhouse right before everything is, is set to be put in the ground and you may not be able to get what you need because everything's going to be sold out so if you can plan ahead be able to go and get the plants that you need bring them home and be able to do what's called hardening off because these plants are coming from a greenhouse environment so it's very warm it's very humid they are really happy in there and you're going to be putting them out into the elements and they're not used to that and so you will bring them home um, and then do the hardening off process that is you know you pull them into the house and then you take them outside for a couple hours one day and then you bring them back to the house it's a little bit of a seesaw and then you take them out for a few more hours the next day so it's just climatizing them to the elements that they're going to be in but if you can do that and and want and uh extend that time that you're hardening off you'll have better options at the greenhouse because you're not going to be taking over um, the slim pickings when everyone else had already gone in and gotten what they needed because you're all growing in the same zone anyway um, and then you have that extra hardening off time to be able to climatize them slowly to be able to, to put those um, out but I would say definitely where you live is a huge factor in when you can plant what you can plant as well because if you live in somewhere that is um, very far north your season is going to be very short so you're not going to want to plant things like artichokes for, exa for example that take over a hundred days to, to come to maturity um, things like radishes that take 30 days those are those are better suited for you know those types of climates but people that live down in the south kind of have the opposite problem they're so warm that they can grow multiple things that like i can't grow here in utah i can't grow citrus for example they can grow citrus but it also gets so hot down there that um, they may have some problems with their tomatoes setting fruit because it gets too hot and so they have to take into consideration that and maybe think of some some shade structures that you're going to want to do on those types of plants so knowing your your different types of plants where you live your humidity levels your heat levels your cold levels and the tolerance in all of these different plants is hugely beneficial for you to have a successful garden that's beautiful that that's a master class <laughs> right here <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing because, you know, people don't think about those things until it happens. So it's a good way to literally think about what you're consuming. You know, like you said, citruses and radishes and artichoke. Like you hear these things every day, but you're like, oh, this is in season. Strawberries are in season. Oranges are in season. But you don't know what it really means. You don't know how long it takes to get to that point. So I really thank you for giving us that long, comprehensive and stretched out, you know, I just don't know what to call it. It's just, it's just beautiful because now I'm, I'm thinking and in my head, I'm thinking, okay, we go to the grocery store. Some people go to the farmer's market. They're like, oh, I'd rather go to the farmer's market and get it because it's organic. And, you know, and yeah, it's debatable. But how does someone know if it's good based on what they're seeing if they don't have a farm to, you know, validate that? Like you can be home, you can go to the farm. You can see exactly what is going on and you can say, nah, I'm not doing that. Or yes, that's what I'm looking for. But someone who has no clue, a novice, how can they easily decipher that and pick something that's good for their body and for their family? I think that's a fantastic question because we're, we're so used to this Amazon overnight mail type of lifestyle that we have nowadays. That, you know, if I want, you know, avocados, I live in Utah, I can't grow avocados. 
but bless our neighbors in Mexico, they send us the most delicious avocados that we can have. But we, we've been so um, kind of programmed to, to think that we can have anything at any time. And like you said, it's, it's much better to be able to buy things in season when they're in season and be understanding about that. Because if you're gonna go to um, you know, the farmer's market in April, say that you live in Florida, you may be able to buy strawberries. If you live, we don't even have our farmer's market open until like around August or September because it's wow. so late here. <laughs> and so if, as long as you're going to a farmer's market, I would say that the farmers that are, are there more than likely are going to be very knowledgeable about what is coming into production um, at that time and then what is not able to be you know brought in like I said if it's the middle or the, the first part of spring you're more than likely not going to have um, strawberries like um, parsnips or something that take a really long time to grow and so if you are coming in and you want to make some sort of parsnip dish that they're not available until the fall then you're going to be disappointed I would say that if you can look around and see if they have anything near you that's called a CSA, that's called Community Supported Agriculture. And what it is, is there's a farmer somewhere that says, hey, I'm gonna grow this, this food, this is um, something that you can buy into and have a box every month or every week, depending on how they have it structured. So it's kind of like, um, a, not a delivery box, but in a sense for the way that our minds work nowadays, that's a, in a sense what it is. You pay the farmer the beginning of the year and, and then you have a share of their crop. And so it's their responsibility to grow everything. You go and pick up your box from them on whatever you know segments that they have. And then whatever's in the box is what is in the box. And so they are pulling out things at the peak freshness, at the peak ripeness, and putting those in your box for the week. Those are kind of fun because you, um, especially if, if you're a little bit of a foodie and you want to try to stretch yourself um, to know exactly where, um, or exactly you know what comes out of, of this box and some of the times you get those boxes and you're like I don't even know what this is like <laughs> this, is, this is this is not familiar to me this red thing and you have to have a conversation with the farmer then and they can explain to you more often than not how they would utilize it or how they would would choose to, to use that in a dish uh, there's actually an app a new app on on the spectrum that's called Culinear and that's actually what Jody, the facilitator of that, is trying to cultivate, is connecting people that want that kind of lifestyle or that kind of food with farms from around the country to be able to bring them together with recipes. So the farmers will be able to tell, say, okay, these are the things that are going to come in your box, and here are some recipes that you can cultivate together. And so I think that's going to be huge. It's just getting off the ground. Um, Jody's doing an amazing job trying to put that together. And so I, I would highly suggest everybody to look into a CSA wherever you live um, and see if that's something that is, is feasible for you. And then, yeah, just keep it in mind when you go to the grocery store, just because they have, you know, like I said, avocados in the middle of winter, that's not really how life always has been. That's how our life is now. But if you're looking to buy locally, definitely the farmer's market, so CFAs, that's gonna be where you're finding your your best um, produce that is grown in your types of soils that are being pollinated by the bees that are um, you know, into the pollen that you may have allergies to, that may, there's there's a little bit of studies to do, especially with the honey, that if you're eating that type of honey with those types of pollens in it, that it may be able to help with your allergies. And so I, they haven't really done the research into it to find out if the food grown with and being pollinated with and those pollens are, are helping as well. But I, I think the more that we can do to eat locally, I think that is going to be better for us that's going to be better for transportation around the road that's going to be better as a whole that's true that's true i think what you just said now has given people a lot of hope to think more about what to choose and how to choose things because you know people like to go to target you know they like to go to walmart they like to go to kroger or Publix or heb wherever you want to go but they want to buy those things really well or even whole foods you know it, it depends on where you really want to get your your produce from but now what comes to mind now is would somebody rather go and spend money on a grocery store 
to get their groceries or they would go to a farmer's market. Like if these are two different families, does one suffer and the other one doesn't? How does that go? <laughs> because you, people are thinking about opportunity costs, distance, and all those other factors that come in between as well. So how does someone make that decision without being overwhelmed with the decision that they choose? I, I think that that is a very good point because there is, um, in a sense, you know, down the line, of it, somewhere down the line, people are being affected, you know, right. whether it be, um, you know, however far down the line, sometimes it's, it's the first person that you meet down the line, sometimes it's 10 people down the line that, that you meet. Um, and I would say there's a lot of grocery stores, like my local Smith, it's a, it's a Kroger. They tote, you know, within their produce section that they're trying to source their produce as locally as possible. And I appreciate that. I, Awesomely, I think that that is awesome of them to try to do to um, try to combat trying to truck things in from you know on the east coast when we've got it you know right down the street type of thing. Just right. the logistics, simple logistics that, that make a lot more sense both financially for them and um, financially for the the farmer right down the road. Um, I would say that in in, in essence, the um, your local farmers are going to be hugely benefited by any sort of support that they can get from you. And if you are someone that is using SNAP benefits or something like that, um, then you can call down to your, or look on Facebook for your local farmer's market, message them and see what they are doing as far as SNAP benefits go. Our local um, farmer's market here in town especially during COVID, they were doing double benefits. So you were actually being able to get double the amount of produce at the farmer's market um, as far as cost goes versus, you know, getting the, the single benefit from the grocery store. So I know that there's quite a few farmer's markets that were trying to do that, especially through COVID. I hope that they continue that, but most of the, the farmer's markets are going to be able to take SNAP benefits as well from what I understand and what, where I've talked to, to other people, to other gardeners. Um, that they have started to facilitate that. So I would definitely say that if you can buy local, by all means, do that. Um, if you can't, that's okay. Try to see if your grocery store would be willing to source locally if that's not something on their signage and things that they are, are looking around to. Um, do keep in mind, like I said, you know, if, if um, here in, in Utah I want them to source lemons locally, that's going to be a little bit rough for them to do and they're going to be more expensive because it's going to be somebody that has a greenhouse, they have to heat all winter versus shipping them in from Florida or California. Right. So it's really about opportunity cost and what you really want for yourself as convenient as, as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah, major. Definitely. That is major. Now, I think one of the things I want to ask last is when somebody is gardening, because you've done it for a while, mm -hmm. and I know you've said in earlier, you said just start. Where does someone start from? Do they start from the theory? like learning the basics, the requirements, the tools, or do they just get to a garden and start digging? Like, what, how do they get across that thinking process to the doing process? So there is a YouTuber that I watch all the time. Her name is Jess. She has Roots and Refuge Farm on, on YouTube. She has a saying that she always says that says, make your waiting room your classroom. So if you're in an apartment, you have no monetary feasibility to be able to buy an aquaponic system, but you also don't have a community garden place that you can go at and actually get in the dirt. Make that waiting room, because you, if you already know you want to, you want to grow your, your food, make that waiting room your classroom. Start learning now, even though you can't do it right now, use that waiting room as your classroom to be able to learn everything that you can now so that when you do get in the position or in a, a life opportunity presents itself that you're going to be able to hit the ground running um if you have the opportunity like i said a community garden space um or or an aquaponic system or anything like that um i think it depends on your personality i'm i'm a little bit more of a research person that i like to research stuff before i start it but I also know myself well enough to know that sometimes that's analysis paralysis and maybe a way of me procrastinating, procrastinating um, actually just doing the thing. So I would say if you want to try this for the first time, get a pot. Don't don't go too big too soon. I will I will say that if you do go too big too soon, you're going to overwhelm yourself. 
um, get you know a, a little a, a pot or a little spot in your garden or in your yard and put in some lettuce seed and some radishes. Those are both some very quick crops. You can get a quick win within a month. You'll have your radishes. Um, and I think that that's where I would recommend anyone to start is just to, um, you know, get a couple of really quick, easy things, learn a little bit about them. Um, YouTube is full, full of information. I've got a bunch of information on my Instagram and I'm always open for questions. If you have any questions, just DM me. Um, but I, I would say, if you can find something like that that has a quick win, um, that you know, if you forget to water them for a couple of days, and they die, you can start over, and you're you're still going to get something within a month. Uh, uh, but you know, put that timer on your your phone to go off every day to remember, especially if it's something new, to remind you to go out and check on things just to make sure everything's going okay. But I I would say just to to dive in, dive in 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 the shallow end of the pool, but definitely dive in if you can. That's beautiful. Wow. That's a big lesson I've learned today. And I know a lot of people have also thought through about this and they're like, okay, now I know what to do. Now I can make better decisions and think about the longevity of my health and how I can take care of myself without having to think about the cost of it. So this has been really helpful. I really appreciate you for this. This is not an episode that people will skip because this is like once it's like that gem that you see that you don't want to leave alone because you're like this is all about health wellness gardening 132 years is not a day it's not 132 days so it's it's a lot of information and a lot of experience and i really thank you for the ability to come to the podcast show and just show people a little bit of what you do and give them that hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel well thank you i appreciate you having me on and that's I, I, I love to teach people that they can garden, but I think that the thing that they don't realize is going to come out of it, and it's kind of a little bit of a surprise, is the therapy and the mental clarity that comes from it. As, as monotonous it is, as it is and as simple as it is, um, there's something about that simple, simplicity that really just clears your mind and makes you think a little bit better, and it's really a therapy for your heart if that's what you're looking for. That's big. Wow. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. You know, if anybody would like to connect with you and let's say they want to have a consultation with you and just reach out to you, how is that possible? What are the best options they have available? Um, I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm, of course, on Clubhouse where you and I met. Um, I am on Instagram and TikTok under Homestead Garden Farm. Um, I have a website that is homesteadgardenfarm.com. And they, if you click on the link um, in most of my bios, if you go to the website, um, you'll be able to see how to book a consultation with me on there. I also have a free gardening guide for somebody that's just getting started out that takes you through you know, the, the needs of your soil, um, watering your plants and that kind of thing. It's kind of a good kickoff, four-page PDF that you can get for free. Um, if you go to my website and it will be right there for you. Amazing. And we're also going to put it in the show notes so that they can access your website directly from the podcast episode. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate this. This has been a lot of fun to talk to you about it. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lacey. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome.